Welcome to Forest Namesake. We're glad that you're here. A while back we got a request asking how my parents met and they're happy to do it and so I'm going to ask them some questions. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. You both can take turns with these. Uh, were you interested in marriage or courtship dating for your future spouse? At the time that you both met, were you prepared to meet someone for marriage? I guess I'll go. <laughs> uh, no, in fact, I did not want to get married at all, but I wanted to have eight children. And my parents said, you have to get married to do that. That was back in the day when, you know, you get married in order to have children. So, uh, and I thought, well, then I guess I'm not gonna have the kids. I'm just not gonna get married. I'm not interested in getting married. So when I met my husband, I was not even thinking about marriage. That was, I was a new Christian and I was really on fire for God at that time. And that's all I wanted to uh, concentrate on was serving God really for me. Yeah, for me, it was like, I was lonely as heck. So I was like, I was, you know, I'm an I'm only child. And so, the only people I know were in were was people I graduated with that were my age, and they all had they were all you know couples or whatever and but I was not in that crowd and so I just knew that if I was ever going to get married that God was going to have to bring uh, my future wife to me and so that's what I've I've been praying all this time is that God would just introduce me to my future wife and. And we'll, you know, just keep praying. Do you both remember how old you were when you met? Mm. We got married. I was. We got married when when I was 23, and he was 24. So it was two years before that. I know that because mm -hmm. we were friends before we got married. Yep. Okay. And how did you meet? I think we'll start with you. Okay. Well, I was going to college. And um, I, uh, because I didn't drive, I needed a ride to get to church on Sundays. And I put a notification on a, I guess a billboard or a board at the college saying, I need a ride to take me to church on Sundays. And this, out of all the people there, it wasn't a college students that reached out to me. It was a couple, an older couple and man and wife, husband and wife, and they, called me up and said we will be glad to take you to church on Sundays so one thing led to another I ended up being their friends and they knew that my parents at the time were overseas in Indonesia and um, I had no place to go for Thanksgiving and Christmas and that sort of thing so they took me in basically under their wings so to speak I would stay with them a lot of weekends or Christmas or Thanksgiving and that sort of thing and uh, so then one one time just out of the blue they said would you like to go uh, meet our nephew and I thought um, I guess <laughs> I thought that was kind of a, a boring I thought I thought for sure that was going to be a boring situation but I had no other place to go so what what was I supposed to say I mean I was staying with them so obviously I'd have to go with them to meet the nephew <laughs> who had lived about three hours away from me at that time so we drove the, the three hours to the location where the nephew was. I, I'm sorry, the question again was how did we meet? Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so we drove the three hours, or I think it's yeah, three and a half or three hours to go see the nephew. And uh, I, I'll I'm, let, the, I'm the nephew. I'm the, you're the nephew, so I, I'm going to let him tell you what happened when I stepped outside of that vehicle. Well, this is the next question. <laughs> yeah. Your first impressions of each other. Well, first impressions are different from a lot of things. <laughs> that, well, the first, when she first stepped out of the vehicle, I literally, I, serious is serious. I heard this voice in my head say, this is your wife. And, but I looked at, but, but when just looking at her, looking at Martina, it's like, I don't know. But yet, at the same time, you know, the, the words are still in your head. This is your future wife. And it's like, where are you, what are you supposed to do with that? We just met. So, and then, I don't know. Go yeah. ahead. And when I stepped out of the vehicle, a voice I know is from God said to me, 
this that man there in front of you is your future husband and I thought whatever because, because at that time I thought I was so beautiful I was in love with myself I thought I was just gorgeous um, I mean I had I think I had at that time blondish brown hair and I, I, I was very um, stylish I uh, wore high heel shoes. I actually wore the high heel shoes <laughs> to, out there in the country. You know, that couple never told me we were going to the country. I mean, maybe I would have worn some different shoes and maybe not. And I had on a silk uh, blouse and I thought I was just this most gorgeous. And I was wearing a lot of makeup and earrings. And I just thought I was just gorgeous thing stepping outside the car. And I thought, where are we? And surely not. This cannot be my, where my future husband is. But I did hear an audible voice tell me that at the time. So then we went down to the, uh, while the parents were in there, while the adults were, his parents and his uh, family members were inside talking in the house, we were outside on the porch, looking outside at the farmland, because he was a farming at the time, and I was, uh, I think I was on the swing, and you were standing by the pole. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I kept thinking in my head, this can't be my future husband, there is no way on this earth that I'm marrying that man standing in, next to me here. <laughs> so, what's your next question? Was it kind of well, leading up to? Do you remember any conversation between the two of you that you even had? Well, let's just say <laughs> it was a very one-way conversation. <laughs> she asked questions and I answered them yes, no, and that's kind of how that went. <laughs> he didn't ask me any questions about myself. Nope, I asked him all way. kinds of questions like, how long have you been farming? Have you been farming all your life? Do you have any siblings? I mean, I just went on and on. Do you get to do the, ride the tractors? Do you have to... I mean, I don't know how many questions and he would answer them, but then he didn't ask me anything about myself. And I had so much to tell him. i had been around the world and back. I wanted to share with him all those things. and about my life and he didn't ask me one question about myself so immediately i'm thinking i can't wait to get out of here this guy is so rude <laughs> <laughs> and definitely has no class <laughs> are you going to go into looks next i didn't want to take yeah. that from you <laughs> well the next question was going to be any lasting impressions like when you were driving away what were your last <laughs> thoughts about your visit <laughs> well before before that Oh, yeah, let, let me let me just say that we're you know I, I was on a we were on a farm and that day we had I was working with cows and so you know I probably smelled like a cow myself and and um, and so yeah there were you know you know cows you know <clears throat> in the background moving and stuff like that and and so yeah, I, I was not dressed for the situation at all. I had no idea she was going to show up or anything like that. I had no idea that my aunt and uncle were going to show up. Yeah. That was a, they, that was a spur of the moment idea they had. And yeah. so yeah, I I hadn't shaved. I hadn't changed clothes. I had I still had you know manure on my boots if you want to say that. And it, it was not the best situation to be meeting your future wife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and. He, like he didn't he didn't shave so it looked like he was growing a beard and I had always told my parents I am never marrying a man with a beard and so that was already a no-no mm -hmm. and then he had dirty fingernails because he'd been working with you know grease uh, tractor grease and working out in the field and I thought oh and then his pants his jeans looked like they were dirty like somebody had slopped a bunch of dirt on there and I thought this is gross this man is gross <laughs> And then he doesn't talk to me. He only answers my questions. He doesn't ask anything about me. He's definitely not interested in me whatsoever. We couldn't even be friends. I thought, how are we going to get a friendship going like this? You know, friendship requires a two-way street. Both people asking each other questions and talking. So I thought he was just really stuck up. I really thought that. In my moment, I thought, this guy is, he's just stuck up. Rude. Has no class. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm driving away, I'm just thinking, oh, thank God we're, we're out of here. Thank God we didn't stay very long. It seemed like an eternity, but really we were only there for about an hour, I think. <laughs> so drove three hours, only stayed about an hour. But anyway, so I was just glad to get out of there. <laughs> what was the next? Well, do you remember the thought that came to you when you were driving away with his aunt and uncle? Yeah, that's what I was, well, I was, you know, even though I was disgusted with him, 
and I thought what a waste of time that was and I hope that the parents had a good time visiting because I didn't think we had a good time visiting. Oh, and I do need to mention a side note, which is just to kind of let you know how dumb I am when it comes to farming and wild, you know, animals in the wild and stuff, because there was a bird flying in the sky, and, and, it, and I thought it was a huge, uh, like an eagle or something, and I guess I'd seen movies where eagles picked up humans, and I was actually terrified that this huge bird was coming after us, and it was just a, what was it? What, what y'all call a, it in the country? A, is this a turkey vulture? A buzzard. A buzzard. A buzzard. A buzzard. <laughs> and so I asked him stupid questions like that. Oh no! Is the bird coming to, coming to get us? So he was probably thinking, she is what so a stu dumb. What a stupid person this is. You're scared of a bird. <laughs> and I'd been to college and everything. You would think I'd have some kind of intellectual brains but I guess not <laughs> so yeah so back to the car I'm thinking I I'm glad we're leaving that was a total waste of time and then his aunt turns around all you know while the the dad the husband's driving and she turns and looks at me and goes so kind of charming like what do you think of our nephew and she kind of you know almost bats her eyes a little bit her eyebrows and I just said he was rude it was a one-way street he has no class he's gross I, mean, I just kept going on and on about it, you know, that sort of thing. So what were you thinking when I left? Kind of oh, well, uh, I said that was a total disaster. I didn't even get her address or number no. or anything. I didn't, you know, there's no way to contact her. So it was like that, that was like, I, I bombed that one. <laughs> and then by the same token, after she asked me kind of charming, like, what'd you think of our nephew? And I told her, she goes, oh, well, that's too bad, you know, and then we we're driving down the road and we hadn't even made it to the end of the, and it's a real long road. I think it's like at least a mile down to the next or more down to the next T. And before we even got to that next turn off, I said, uh, and I kind of patted her on the shoulder and I said, um, excuse me, let's just say her name's Mary. Mary, um, I need to, can I get his address? Can I get Mike's address? And she said, oh. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, but I thought you didn't have a good time. Why would you want to write to him? And I said, I don't know. Something tells me that we need to keep in touch. <laughs> so that's what we did. We started to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think you already mentioned this, but do you remember how long you exchanged letters or kept a friendship? It was two years. Yes, two years. It was two years. We were just friends. And then maybe once or twice in a year, depending on when he wasn't harvesting or something busy like that on the farm he would drive up the three hours uh, to come and see me just as friends I was living in a dorm I think at the t no it was an apartment but it looked like a dorm it was one of those interesting ones but anyway uh, he would drive up there the three hours and we would just talk or, and he shared he liked to write poems and so he would show me his poems and I liked to write music the musical notes part of it and so we were kind of sharing that back and forth and spent quite a quite a bit of time just being friends mm -hmm. I think we even went to a park once and just kind of roamed around and we did a lot of uh, talking a lot of hours of just talking and, uh, and then of course writing letters just pen pal friends best mm -hmm. of friends yeah. I told each other every everything and we knew everything about each other pretty much by the time we got married yes most so of it. yeah can you recall a time when you discovered that you loved each other yes uh, well, let's see, at this time she was uh, out of the States, she was... Singapore. Uh, yeah, she was at Singapore, and I got this letter that, you know, she had been, what, sick for two weeks or something like that, and uh, so I was just very worried about her, and so I wrote her a letter and told her I loved her, and, and I sent that to her, and... Uh, what, 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 were you, what were you thinking? That was about the same time. I was very sick. My parents didn't know what was wrong with me. And being in a foreign country like that, we thought maybe it was like, I'm probably to say it wrong, a meat dysentery, something parasitic. We dysentery. Thought it was, yeah, we thought it was something really, really bad like that. And But eventually I, it, I got healed. Maybe he was praying for me. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? And I got better. And then when he wrote me that letter, I was thinking, wow, about the same time I was had the same mutual feelings for him that it was more than just a friendship just like that it just came naturally yeah 
and how did you propose? Uh, let's see. Well, it wasn't that romantic. <laughs> but That's for sure. I hope you remember where you proposed. <laughs> yes, um, I took her for a drive, and I had this all planned out. I took her for a drive, and on the way back back to our, our house, and this is at, you know, out in the country where I live, and yeah, you know, on the way back, I we we went over a bridge. I pulled over, and she probably was like, "What is he planning?" And I pulled out this the engagement ring in a box and gave it to her and said, uh, "Will you marry me?" And, she said she thought about it for about 20 minutes and <laughs> did i really no <laughs> it was not over a bridge it was under the bridge under. i remember it was under the bridge yes it was and i thought this is not a very romantic proposal that's what i was thinking at the time but i think he was just really excited to ask me to marry him he didn't want to wait another minute mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yes but i did not take 20 minutes i was excited about it i said yes and do you remember what day that was? Valentine's Day. It was on Valentine's Day. Yep. 1992? Yeah, it was because we, we got engaged pretty much the same year that we got married. Yes. That's right. 1992 of Valentine's Day, February 14, 1992. Mm -hmm. So how many years have you both been married? Let's say at the same time. Let's see if you can remember. <laughs> on the count of three. They one, this before two, <laughs> three, 32. <laughs> Hesitated on the two. <laughs> it seems like forever. <laughs> well, Valentine's, you know, in her early 30s, so we've been married 32 years. <laughs> yeah. And what is one thing you both love about each other? Who wants to start? I, I, go ahead. I can go first. Oh, well, I love that he uh, he's very, uh, well, <laughs> up until recently, he says it's kiss. He has uh, or had a lot of patience with me because I had a lot of um, emotional baggage that I brought into the marriage and from things in my past. And he was very patient with me and um, just continued to care for me as a friend and, and, and that we're, we're best friends. We are. We really are best friends. And Daddy, what do you love most about Mommy? I don't know. It's got to be at least one thing. No. <laughs> no, uh, I guess what I like about her most is, you know, that, you know, her sp spontaneousness. It's one thing that's that's fun, and but on the other side, drive me, but on the other hand, drives me crazy. You know, like uh, this one time uh, we were married and, and everything, and she's like, let's go to Six Flags. You have to tell people Today, what six flags, people overseas don't know what that flags, is. Six Flags, Six Flags is basically, you know, a music park with a lot of rides Roller and coasters. stuff like that. <laughs> and it was like, I hadn't planned this, we hadn't planned this, we hadn't talked about it. She wanted to go today. And so, yeah, we went, went to, was, we got everything ready, went to Six Flags and enjoyed ourselves. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's Martina. She, she likes to just do spontaneous things and I, I like to plan things out. But it's fun. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this interview with my parents. I'm very blessed to be their daughter. Oh, <laughs> sweet. And um, if you have any other topics that you'd like us to discuss, leave them in the comments below and we'll pray and see if we can work that in a video. And we appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe and click the notification bell that lets you know anytime a video comes out. And we hope that you have a blessed day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.